Good day everyone, my name is Chris and well, I firmly believe that Tesla, in fact all car makers, should be having Android Auto and well, Apple CarPlay as standard. Here's why. So welcome everyone. In this episode, I'm going to dive into why a bit more like, well, Tesla and well, Elon Musk who said that coming soon to Tesla is going to be the ability to reply and um, you know, listen to SMS messages when in fact since 2014, in fact a little bit earlier, your car has been able to do it through the help of Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And well, in the last few weeks Android Auto has thankfully had a great update because in the past it was a pretty bland experience and hadn't been changed in five years. And thankfully, well, they've kind of copied iOS with Apple CarPlay. And it is a great update. So, if you want to try it out yourself and you've got an Android phone, you need to do just two things. Start up Android Auto, click on the top left-hand corner, go to settings, and then toggle this uh, eater. See that one? I don't know why it's just, you have to do this, because, well, I guess maybe it's under development. But nonetheless, definitely do it because you'll love it. All right, ready? Let's jump straight in. So when you actually um, plug your phone in, you're presented straight away with Google Maps, which as we all know, is the industry leader in map technology. Here, I've got the satellite view. You can also toggle it off to the normal sort of default mode, okay? It, whatever suits your taste. I prefer the satellite view, kind of looks cool. And um, we've got real-time traffic updates. You can mute um, the uh, directions. You can have things like just traffic alerts only and so forth. And with route options, you can say, hey, avoid motorways, toll roads, or ferries. Now, a bit of orientation for you. Down the left-hand corner, you've got your microphone button, so that will activate the Google Assistant. You've got your notifications, so by tapping that, you're gonna um, see what your last notification was. Then, this is where the great change is. Essentially, what Android is now doing is having two apps loaded at once. So right now I'm in Maps, but there's a little shortcut icon to jump over to, let's say, Music Play. I've also got my navigation buttons there for back, play, and forward, as well as a home button. So if I tap on that home button, you're now presented with all the different apps that work with Android Auto. Now, this is where companies like Tesla and well, any car maker for that matter, should just be letting Apple and Android do all the heavy lifting because let's face it, your car probably comes with what, two, three, four apps, you know, like something to stream music with, internet radio, but what if you could actually have a dozen different apps? This is the benefit of actually using the ecosystem that is Android Auto. So here you've got your top four last used uh, Apps. So in this case, we've got Maps, Spotify, Music, and Phone. And then we can scroll down and you can use Amazon Music, Audible, Calendar, News, Overdrive, Podcast Addict, Podcasts, VLC, TuneIn Radio. Well, these are the ones that I've loaded up, but you can have different ones. Like if Pandora is your thing, you can use Pandora. Yeah, definitely. And a benefit also for those who love Waze, you can choose Waze instead of Google Maps because, well, some people prefer it. If I was to tap on the weather icon or the calendar event, it would actually tell me what the weather is right now. Right now in Taylor's Lakes, it's 11 degrees and mostly cloudy. In the um, Google Play app, you know, I could be playing the music and let's say I really like what I'm listening to. I'm gonna click the radio button over there and now you see that radio icon. By pressing that, it's actually gonna start a new mix based upon whatever song you were just playing. So. If you don't want to hear an album, if you don't want to hear just that artist, you click on that, and then suddenly you've got a whole different selection of music that you can actually be listening to. It's awesome stuff. And once again, notice down the bottom um, of the screen, you've got your Maps icon. So that cuts between, obviously, Google Play Music and Maps, and vice versa. And it's that quick change that has made this a lot more powerful and an absolute asset to any car that it's in. So in addition to all the different apps, be it podcast play, music player, uh, map navigation, you also have the ability to have a re uh, reply messages to you and you can respond to them, so. Andrew Richardson says, do you use any rewards credit cards at all? Do you want to reply? 
Yes. What's the message? Uh, yeah, we have St George's credit card. Got it. Here's your message. Yeah, we have St George credit card. Do you want to send it or change it? Yeah, and look, I could initiate phone calls using Google Assistant and whole, the whole ecosystem that actually helps you and your life and makes it a whole lot simpler is now built into your car. And the power of that is just amazing. Like, I can do this. Turn off the front lights. Sure, turning off four lights. Yeah, or maybe you might have a nest thermostat. You can do this. Turn on the aircon at home. Set it to 24 degrees. That device hasn't been set up yet. Yeah, I don't have a nest, but if I did, it could do that. So, what do you think? Do you think I'm right? Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. Sure, people will say, but Chris, there's some sort of annual fee that maybe Tesla has to pay or whatever car maker you have does. But I just figure that if you're a premium car maker, put it in the price of the car. Yeah, this is something that gives people who are actually the consumers an abundance of choice and the apps will always stay up to date. And that means that, you know, car companies can focus on making better cars.